righty. Absolutely fantastic. Once again, welcome back. You're still hanging out with us right here on the hashtag, which is why in the morning. And this is the last interview of the day. But before that, you can always interact with us on our social media, and that includes X, Facebook, and Instagram, including threads at 2244 channel. And mine's is at Brian Sokwa 101 via the hashtag why in the morning. And I guess that I'm about to introduce to you, by the way, before we just get too far, just start sending questions. Start sending them questions. I'll be sampling them right here. <laughs> on my phone as we continue with the conversation. Now, the guest who is live with us in studio, you might remember her from a syndicated um, TV magazine dubbed NTV Teen Republic. From radio to TV, she's a master of killing it when it comes to media. Talk about digital influencing, emceeing, actress, being a moderator. Good Lord, she's a jack of all trade. Not only is she just charming, she's beautiful and powerful and a legend in the making. Ladies and gentlemen, guess who? Miss Tracy Wanjiro. Good morning, Brian, Tracy. Brian, that was a really amazing introduction. I've actually never had anyone introduce me like that. I heard that really? and I was like, yeah, that's me. Really? That's me. That's me. Yeah. Look at me. Yeah, we're, we're going to have to write that next time so that even when I go do some things, I'm like, yeah. yeah. So I'm... Um, you know, a legend in the making. Nah, nah. Absolutely. No, that's Absolutely. great. I love that. Thank you so and, much for having me, Brian. And welcome. We are so elated and Thank so excited you. to have you. And first of all, to meet you in person, apart from reading yes. about you, watching you on TV, listening to you on radio. And like talking on the phone. That? <laughs> yes, and talking on the phone, a new friend. <laughs> so how do you do all of this before we get to even know who you are and how you started? Right. How do you just balance all that? I feel like, um, especially being in the industry that we're in, it's really easy to sort of like balance because you're not really having like a nine to five or, um, you know, an eight to four kind of uh, sort of like engagement, right? So it's easier to manage because you understand what's going on throughout your days. Right. So you have like a five hour work window or sometimes you don't even have a five hour work window, you know? Right. So it becomes really easy to, to juggle because you realize the days that I have work, there's some things that I'm going to have to let go. Right. Um, there are things that maybe I could do. So for me, it's not even really about balancing. It's just looking at my days and seeing what can I do, what can I not do? Right. And one thing that I came to realize is that you can't have, for example, five priorities. Right. You have just, you can only just have one priority. Right. right. So, for example, Brian, today you have to host a Y2, uh, Y24 show or yeah. you have to go get your hair done. Right. You can't say both of them are your priorities. There's that's one that's the bigger priority. So which Absolutely. one is it? It's you coming for the show. So right. that's how I look at the things in life. I yeah. can't do everything in one day, right. but I could figure out this is my priority for the day and that's what I'm going to, to, to do. So it's more right. about being productive than yeah. being busy. Right. Because yeah. a lot of people would prefer to be busier because yeah. you know, sometimes the people think the more busier you are, the more, the more productive. fulfilled and exactly. productive you are. But, but it's, it's, it's not really exactly. not. It's really yeah. not. You end up being burnt out right. and you look at the gains and you're like, no, I really didn't, didn't gain as much as I should have. Right. So find that priority for your day and right. maximize on that. It could be even just reading a book. Right. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Right, there's a, a notification that's coming. Is she Kenyan? <laughs> Definitely, she's here. She's gonna tell us if she's Kenyan or not. But let's backtrack a little bit. Where did you grow up? Where were you born? And are you really Kenyan, like she's saying right here? <laughs> yes, so I am born and raised Kenyan. Uh, my mother is a Kenyan. Uh, my dad is, is not Kenyan, right? So he's South Korean, but I grew up with my mother. Right. Um, she was a single mom. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's, it's been quite the journey. So I don't remember this, but uh, my mom, you know, when she came to Nairobi, she tells me that, you know, she had given birth in, in that area, in Dandora area. And then from there, we moved to South B, then from South B, moved to Zimmerman, from Zimmerman, now moved on to other places in life. But the core places that I do remember of my life is now Zimmerman, because right. that's where I, that's where I remember a lot of the things a lot of that childhood shaped, memories exactly, childhood well. memories. Yeah. I, I remember Your home girls, my home girls, you know, <laughs> um, the tomboy things that we used to do, right. you know, riding bikes. You're a tomboy? Yes. I, I oh feel like we, we just did a lot of tomboy stuff because, you know, either playing football, right. you know, riding you the bike. You played football. Yeah. Yeah, so we used to do this thing <laughs> where we'd ride the bike from Zimmerman to Gidurai, um, right. because it's not too far, right? right yeah, so sure. you just go up Absolutely. the hill and then you go down. I, I, so Zimmerman really holds a lot of the memories, memories that, that I have, yeah. exactly, of my childhood. What about your high school before you get to uni and then 
Man, media. High, high school was also very, um, it was very convoluted in the sense that I really changed schools a lot in the four year season. Because, you know, it's just four years, but in yeah. four years I'd gone to three schools. Yeah. So the first what was school, happening in between? So the first <laughs> school that I went to, I, th I experienced a lot of bullying, right? Oh, right. Uh -huh. So I just couldn't stay there for too long. The bullying was too excessive, yeah. and it got to a point where if I was going to have a good mental well-being, well -being, right. or even physical, because it even get, got to a point where my physical well-being was, um, was being threatened. So sorry so for that. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't do that and then now yeah. move to the other school. Was that it was because of skin color? I believe it did have a, a role to play in that because right. um, I was one of the only light-skinned girls there. Right. So mm -hmm. it, it did play uh, yeah. a, a like role. Like you received a lot of negative attention. A lot of negative attention. Right. And, and it's really hard because that's not what you want. You know, you're just there. Like right. You're, you're enjoying life as a, everyone else. You're going to school just like everyone else, but the right. attention being drawn to you is negative when you're not even, that's not your intention, you know? Right. So, yeah, mm -hmm. then move to another school. That's Three school. of them. Now, no, the second the one. The second one. Uh -huh. And then wasn't, was there for a year because my mother felt like I needed more competition and whatever. Mm -hmm. Then I'll move to my last school, right. which is where I graduated from. Uh, yeah. Are you able to shout them out and... Yes. Them. So I, I finished my fourth year of high school in Riara Springs High School. Right. Yeah. That was a cool kid school. Yeah, it was. And let cool me tell you, school. when I went there, I was like, oh my goodness, people yeah. eat like this? Yeah. You know, because my first, my first school was right. a public school. So you know right. how Pabo mm. eat. Been there. You know, <laughs> every day. <laughs> like it's freestyle. fight for that and and it's freestyle. I, yeah. My God, it was it was it was really yeah. difficult. The second school was, you know, okay, mm -hmm. but now going to Rihanna, Rihanna. I was like, mm. oh my goodness, You're like, this is in Kenya. People are mm. actually going to living school it. like this. Right. You know, even the dorms, um, mm -hmm. public school, you understand how the dorms look like, right? Um, and also even the even health, like <laughs> a million. The health, for the healthcare facility as well. Exactly, everything right. in in our school, um, mm -hmm. high, sorry, Springs High School was just fantastic for me. It really right. felt like a vacation. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I wish most of us would have such <laughs> sweet experiences. Yeah, I, I love that. Yeah. I love that place for me. Right. Yeah. And then uni still, Riyadh is still a group of schools because they have a uni. They yes, have they still have the, the university. Yeah. Um, but around that time, I had already decided to do something else. Uh -huh. So um, it wasn't the best fit for me. But right. here we are. Finally graduated, Probably it was by low, the way. Right? Sorry? I say you like gravitated towards law, tried it, and then. Tried it, didn't, didn't work. work. Um, tried communications, didn't work. Communication didn't work at first? Yes, but not because, n I think I didn't want, I, di I didn't want it as, as bad as I thought I did. Yeah. But then also now, I just graduated with a bachelor's in international relations. Yeah, but congratulations. And I was to you. say that. Thank you. so <laughs> much. Bachelor's degree in international, in international relations. relations. And honestly, at USIU. At USIU. Cool USIU. kids still. Cool kids. <laughs> I don't know what people talk about, but yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> I see. Yeah. It was, um, it, it's been a long time coming, but this is where I feel like my heart needed to be and where I needed to be. Uh, because I'm really passionate about global issues. I'm really passionate about women and children. Right. So when you understand international relations and, you know, especially because I, I concentrated in peace and conflict studies, right. you look at women and children and how they're affected in situations where there's conflict. And yeah. you really, that's where my heart is. And that's where I'd want to make an impact. Yeah. Like yeah. And, and now with... Ukraine and uh, Palestine, Russia, exactly. Hamas, Russia. Can, yeah, whatnot, a lot of the disturbing you know. footage that we're seeing online is, mm -hmm. you know, women, children, you know. Right. And even when you look at um, international humanitarian law, um, right. they're vulnerable persons because unfortunately Absolutely. in mm -hmm. the event of a conflict like what we have, they're mm -hmm. the ones that suffer the most, yeah. right? Not Absolutely. to also, um, not to to say that, you know, the men and um, old older people are not, right. but it's extremely, extremely hard for the kids. You've seen some of those videos. Yeah, gut -wrenching. really heartbreaking. Gut wrenching, really heartbreaking. yeah. Uh, but how, how do they make you feel when you see that now that you've graduated and your passion is there? Do you cry sometimes? Do you have an, oh, yeah. an initiative that you've already Yesterday set up? I was at the gym and I saw a video and I literally just started crying um, mm. but you know it also just makes me think about w 
as Tracy, what's the change that I can make, you know? Right. And sometimes you can maybe do much for, you know, the children, the right. women there. But mm -hmm. here at home, there are people also going, going through a lot of um, hard times. Absolutely. How can I be that change for them? You know, how can I help them? And I yeah. believe that's what my degree now showed me. Because honestly, right. mm -hmm. before I was just doing the degree just to do the degree. Mm -hmm. And then I started learning things and I'm like, oh my goodness. Yeah, we actually have a role to play. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Now that you mentioned that um, media, before we talk about motherhood and the hiatus you took, so when did you officially start, you know, media, your first gig? Uh, what are the memories? What happened? Did you intern? Did you go to auditions? Take us yeah. to that journey before you become the Tracy of NTV. Talk about Larry Maddow, your friends, uh, Mean Abdi Rabah, and the rest. Uh, so my journey started in 2015, and it was a very, very... Um, Honestly, it was just, we can just say it's God, because this is nothing that Ni I had God planned. Ni Ni God. God. Manze, yeah? <laughs> so I, yeah. I hadn't planned on being on TV, because when I finished high school, my plan, right. like I said, was to go to law school. That didn't work. Yeah. And then I quickly realized that I needed money to stay afloat. Right. And, you know, I did a couple of things, and I was just like, you know what, man, I just hope one day that I could get something to do because what Absolutely. a lot of the jobs were, um, me and my friends were doing were like you know go to the clubs you know yeah. sell give, I, no 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 just not. give brochures right. or you know yeah. bottle service kind of um you know work right and you know for a long you do that for a while and it's like okay this is not what i, I want to do for a long time yeah. right so yeah. one time me and my friends had gone for a gig which was supposed to be an advertising job right. but we ended up not getting the gig where was the gig <laughs> it was at the it was at the airport all right so when we were in the van you know mm -hmm. how when you the crew and all of you guys are just sitting in the van trying to make your way from one ter we're trying to make our way from one terminal to the other right and Martin Kimathi was actually there. And mm -hmm. he was like, Who became your co-host? Who became my co-host. Right. So he, he saw me and my friends and was like, by the way, and if he's looking for um, a co-host co for the yeah. show that a I host. Female. Exactly, right. a female uh -huh. co-host. I mm -hmm. think you guys should come through. And we're like, yeah, we're looking for money. We'd right. love to come through, you know. You're at like, that point, you're just... <laughs> <I got> <laughs> exactly. <it. laughs> at, that, at that point, you're just doing it for the money. Right. So... Uh, a month came by and then the day of the auditions came so me and my friends were like okay now let's go we need to go and try the, our luck right. so the auditions were actually at the flyover just down the road here at mm -hmm. Nairobi Uni the flyover that connects from the central police station Absolutely. to the other side mm -hmm. so that's where the audition was and we did the audition didn't get feedback for like three months. So, of course, me and my friends Ooh. were just like, we didn't get the job. You know, Yanni, you've even forgotten about it. And three months is long. And already. three months is a long time. Exactly. Because right. we did the interview, we did the audition in November. Right. And they didn't get back to us until like end January. Mm -hmm. The following year. Which year? Exactly. That's 2015. So, that's 2015. And right. we did the audition twenty end of 2014. Right. So, now, that night, me and my friends had gone for one of those um, gigs that I'm telling you about, you know, mm -hmm. um, make sure that people are seated well, make sure that people are eating, drinking, having a good time, you know. Right. And I, I receive a call, and I didn't know who the call was from. So right. I'm like, hey, what's up? They're like, oh, yeah, you got the job. I'm like, what job? Mm -hmm. They're like, you got the job for the TV show. I'm like, what right. TV show? You know, because right. I completely forgot you had about, forgotten it. about it. And yeah, he was like, Yeah, you remember you did this audition? I'm like, Oh my goodness. I didn't, I couldn't even believe. Was it, it was a male caller or a female? It was a male caller. <laughs> right. Right. And yeah. anyway, that's, that happened. And now it was, we had to go for training and all that stuff. So that's mm -hmm. how my journey started. Right. And now looking back, I again, Nigot. Yeah. Exactly. And how was your first time? Um, your first time appearance i know sometimes it's it's crazy appearing yeah. on tv especially on a national big broadcaster yes. like nation which yes. you were at for a long time it, it's really daunting to it be is. honest yeah and i made a lot of mistakes looking back i made a lot of mistakes on air uh but i think that's really just part of the journey you just have right. to be okay with making mistakes you know sometimes you say something and you're like oh my god what did i say um, right. i shouldn't have said it that way yeah. or maybe i should have delivered the message a bit differently for the audience right. so all that stuff um you come to you come to realize that it's, it's just part of the process and i'm happy right. that i went through that process right. and i'm also grateful for the training process mm -hmm. i remember my first live show however was a big i i don't remember the name of the concert but it was a concert and I was just there attending 
And then all of a sudden we were told you have to do the live coverage. Right. And that just threw me in the dip end. But also what I've come to realize is that you really just need to believe in, in yourself. Yeah. Even if you don't feel well equipped, right. the confidence will uh -huh. make up for at all least right. seventy percent. Percent of that. And then the thirty percent just try and you know, yeah. do a little bit um, yeah, here and there, absolutely. but you just showing up for yourself and feeling right. confident and knowing that you've got it yeah. is and half you looked of the, the job. part. You exactly looked the part, exactly. and you guys had an amazing chemistry. Martin we came out to a point, you know, we thought you guys were dating. Oh my, oh my goodness. god, the <laughs> but then how is that? How is that feedback and that energy? People right. thinking that you guys are. You know you what, know, Martin lovers. and I used to fight a lot, actually. That was the contrary. Mm. <laughs> Martin For and you? I, we used to fight a lot. Yeah, because, you know, you come, to a, you come to a point where you guys are like brother and sister, like for real, for real, you know. Right. So TV you're, bro. And exactly. TV so sister. you guys are fighting over <laughs> the weirdest things, but, it, but also at the same time, it's because you love each other so much right. and you're protective of, of each, each other. other. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, I gained a brother from Martin and he's still a brother until now, you know. So yeah. uh, my family loves Ooh. him, you know, his family loves me. And, you know, that's just kind of, that's just the fact that the kind of relationship that we have. Right. Yeah. And, and how has he experienced uh, at Nation? Because uh, sometimes you pop in a, uh, a lot on the trend. But you've also had a chance to co-host on the trend even yes. when Larry Mado was there. Yes. And mm -hmm. met that community of friends with Akina you know, Mina Abdi Raba and uh, Anita Ndero as well, exactly. who's a good friend of you. Yours. Uh, how is that uh, friendship and that networking and meeting them on the show? It's, it's been a blessing because you come to learn a lot of things from all these individuals because, you know, just as I'm meeting you, Brian, there's something that I could learn from you, right? Because we're different people, have different experiences, you know, have different outlooks in life. And that's why I love the job that I have is because you get to meet people and really just see them for who they are you know, love them for who they are and really appreciate them for who they are. Right. So you get to you get to learn a lot from all those experiences and that's what I love about our work because you, you just learn a lot um, by the interactions. Wow. How was the experience working with Larry Mado now that he's at CNN? <laughs> I know he's a good friend of yours. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a very um, hard working man. Right. Um, additionally, he's also very passionate about um, his work. Right. And I think when you have those two combined, you mm -hmm. have an unstoppable person. Yeah. Passion and diligence, yeah. I mean, uh, unstoppable. You and that's what Larry, Larry is. Right, and, yeah. and, and, and he's actually admirable to me. Very admirable, else. right? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, uh, do you talk? We some occasionally, point, occasionally, mm -hmm. um, but not as much, but All occasionally. Right. He's a very busy man. I know. <laughs> and how was your stint uh, at Nation? Uh, how many years in terms of uh, So that was period? 2015 uh -huh. to, so that was five years. Five good years? That was five good years. Half a Which decade. went by so fast. Yeah, like it flashed <laughs> before your eyes. You're like, exactly. Damn. So did the contracts end or you guys resigned? Because all of a sudden we saw, um, right. uh, I think you came, you came in after Ani Tenderu and yes. Antonio Sol. And yes. they were actually like the first, first, first hosts. And then you guys came in and Martin. And then we had Aziza Hashim and uh, yes. Joseph Trends. Yes. And then you left. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes you do make appearances. Oh, what happened in between? So what had happened was um, in 2021, no, in 2020, yeah. In 2020, I found out that, you know, I was with child. Right. <laughs> so surprise, surprise. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> so right. when I found out that, um, you know, I was going to be a mother soon, I decided that that's not something that I wanted to do right. moving forward. So it was just me saying, you know what, it's time for me to embrace my new season, and okay. my new season is now motherhood. So right. that's why I said goodbye to um, Teen Republic. So it was a warm transition. It was a warm transition. Okay. I think it was it was now difficult for Martin now to move forward because yeah. we already had such a chemistry, a like great chemistry. You know, like yeah. we literally had a really strong bond as right. brother and sister. Mm -hmm. So you know, moving forward was definitely different. And I also believe you know they also wanted a new direction for the show, which they got in in very good. Um, they got really good presenters, Aziza and Joseph Trends. Right. So and now Shout of course there's <laughs> exactly still some community. Exactly, and yeah. now moving uh -huh. forward to to now, maybe the so new set of hosts that they're going to have. Right. So you know, that's just uh, how life is. You know, right. one season is done. Anita's season was done. My season was done. Yeah. You know, Aziza's season was done, and now let's see who the new cats are.
Right, so still good riddance and yes. still allies to the station. A hundred percent, yes. All right, you now, will see me very soon. <laughs> thank you so much for sharing about that. Now, your transition now to motherhood, uh, you taking a social media hiatus and then making a, a radio comeback on Capital. Uh, when did that happen and how was it? Please tell us. Uh, I decided to take the hiatus because motherhood is not as easy as people have made it to look. Okay. And that's just my experience. Mm -hmm. uh, because before getting into motherhood, I thought it was going to be the easiest thing. And shout out to our mothers, because right. our mothers made motherhood look the, like the easiest thing. Like when you see a mother going through motherhood, you don't think about how hard it is. Right. You think about how strong this woman is, how strong this, you know, uh, this woman is facing the challenges. You don't really see the nitty gritties of the everyday to day life of a mother and it's yeah. very very difficult so when i was hit by that i was like oh my goodness i can i i cannot do anything else because i was a full-time mother right um, and you so loved it <laughs> and i loved it and i right. loved it with its challenges i absolutely loved it is there something that changed that by the way is there some yeah. some things that changed about there's a, there's you know that need uh, sorry at the anita bestie manenos yes <laughs> the uh, tracy on tv and the tracy a mom is is, is that difference between the two I, I would say, I would say yes, in mm -hmm. the sense that um, Tracy, now me, inherently, I'm a very conservative person, and right. that has also just transcended in how I do my parenting. Right. Um, you know, as far as Tracy, the media personality, Tracy, the media personality is outgoing, right. you know, is a good time, is fun time. Bubbly. Not saying that, <laughs> you know, at home, I'm just like, yeah, yeah, like gangster mom. <laughs> No, yeah. but it's it's just how I look at life. Um, yeah. I, I wouldn't say they're two very different people, but right. I, I feel like inherently I'm a very introverted, very conservative person. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's that. And that's, like I said, transcended in how I've, I've done my motherhood. Right. Um, and and, and you, you, you're talking about um, battles that mothers go through. Uh, is there at a point when postpartum kicked in and how did you battle it, it out if... It happened. Right. So that's one thing that I believe every single mother needs to be prepared for, and that is what they call the fourth trimester. Fourth so the fourth trimester, trimester is mm -hmm. just the period that the three months after you've just given birth, that is what the fourth trimester is. Right. And that is something that I did not prepare for because, like I said, our mothers have done it so effortlessly, and you right. think it's just that easy. easy yeah. Right? <laughs> so then you get into your fourth trimester, and you're like, oh, my God, you want to tell me I can survive on one hour of sleep? Right. You know, so it's a sleepless night. It's the um, constant, you know, exhaustion. Your body is in pain because you did give birth to a human being. Absolutely. You know, so there's all these changes that you're not properly um, prepared for. Right. So what I would say is that you should definitely prepare because I was not prepared. Yeah. Um, another thing is acknowledging the season that you're in. So right. one of the biggest triggers for my postpartum, um, I would say, so I did this test, it's called a BDI test, so that's right. Beck's Depression Index. Beck's? So Beck's Depression Index. So okay. what it does, it gives you a list of like questions and you're supposed to put your points. Right. And after you've cumulatively collected or added your your points, then you get to see, do, do you have mild depression? Mm -hmm. Do you have severe depression? You yeah. know, um, It's like an app. No, it's not really. I'll, I'll show you, actually. Okay. Um, it, it's like, for example, what I would equate it with is not equated really, but just give you an example. It's like, for example, the earthquakes. You have the Richter scale. Right. Um, you know, it gives you the strongest the number. magnitude. A magnitude, well. exactly. Uh -huh. And then you have the least. Exactly. Right. So it's the same mm -hmm. thing as uh, the, the Beck's depression index. Wow. So That's I new. did that. That's new. I mm -hmm. did that, and I, and I realized that I did have some sort of postpartum depression, right. which was a mild postpartum depression. Right. So the thing how did is, you kick, how did you kick it? The thing is acknowledging mm -hmm. what you're going through, because I really wanted to go back to the Tracy that was before the motherhood, TV. you know, mm -hmm. you know, doing the things that I wanted to do, freedom, mm -hmm. because also when you become a mother, you can't just leave the house. Yeah, you have you're to figure grounded out, for okay, life. You are grounded. You, you really are grounded. <laughs> you have to figure out, right. okay, if I leave at this time, what will this mean for my child? Right. What will, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. So I really wanted to go back to Tracy pre, or rather, yeah, pre-motherhood 
And yeah. that was not possible. So acknowledge mm -hmm. that you're in a new season and yeah. embrace the challenges of that season. Did because you feel it's stuck? It's not going to be easy. Uh, yeah. Did you feel stuck? And that's the problem. Uh -huh. Because you feel so stuck, you're doing the same thing every single day. Mm. Right? Like you're waking up the same time. You're feeding the child at the same time. You're putting them to sleep. You're trying to, do, you're trying to give them a shower. You're trying to burp them. You're trying all the, every single day for a good year. You're just like, oh my God, is my life going to come back right. to, to mm -hmm. you know, normalcy? Normal. Right. right. But that is your normal for that season. Right. And that's something I wish I knew Ali. earlier. Right. Because I would have taken it so much easier on myself. Right. So acknowledge your season. Love your season because also it accept is, it. <laughs> yeah, it is just a season. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you're doing it so well, but you know, we don't know the name of the child or the kid, and the bouncing baby. Know. And we will never know, <laughs> like you say. Is it a male, is it a boy you or a girl? Never know. Sour too. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've also kept it private, no photo, yeah. no sneak peek, no hand, no yeah. leg. But why is it necessary, by the way, to have that kind of privacy? Even not just for your kid, but even for the rest of the family and anyone else who is in the public domain and uh, an intense space like media where it's all about attention, you know, mm -hmm. cameras, people talking, people gossiping sometimes things are written and you're like, damn, yeah. is that even me? I don't know that version I of me though. Person, how yeah. how do you, wh what is the importance of actually doing that? I, I believe it's so important, especially when you have a child because you want to protect this child from the things that they wouldn't be able to grasp so easily. Because right. you know, when you're older, you understand, you, okay, maybe these people are writing these things because you know, they're just hurt people or they just want to make a story. But imagine explaining to your child why someone wrote a very weird a article about you or them, you yeah. know, it becomes a very difficult or, you know, it just becomes very difficult to sort of yeah. like navigate such and things. And they have no right of defense. Exactly. They have no right you know, of they defense. They have no right of defense right. whatsoever. So you really just need to protect that innocence. And for me, right. one thing that I wanted to do is make sure that my child remains a child Right. for the period that they need to become a child. Right. And then when they move to a season where they're no longer a child, then mm -hmm. they can do other things at that time. Right. Uh, because also a big issue that we're starting to see now is uh, identity issues, crisis, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So I don't want to have my child really seek their identity from a place that should not give them identity. Right. And that's why I did not want to introduce them to social media right. or even you know give them my phone to do things on social media maybe. i don't yeah. i don't so want at that. what point will you allow them to have social media and maybe have probably when they're like 21. hi 21 is okay too, no you're too grown honestly bro. Too I, I, grown. I, I would yeah. say uh realistically speaking i would say around 16 years yeah 16 is good i would say 16. what if the school you'll take your kid too, they have gadgets and what You know what, I'm actually really considering homeschooling. Mm -hmm. I'm really To just protect your kid yeah, from that. Yeah. So yeah. what is your advice also to celebrities who have their kids all out there? <laughs> the likes of, I don't know, uh, let's stop name dropping. Let's not name. <laughs> yes, um, those that have kids you know all what? over. I feel like once they're, they're there, it's really hard to really give them advice. Just right. to each their own, you know? Mm -hmm. If you feel like that's good for you and your family, then do Absolutely. it Absolutely. you know but if it's like for me and my family that's not something that we want to do you know i want to protect my child i want to protect uh, my partner i want to protect yeah. our home it is actually a, a <laughs> sanctity people expect you know? a less with luxury rings huh? legs a shoulder we'll legs we'll shoes <laughs> <laughs> but nothing you kept it all yeah you know, we'll, we'll, private you know yeah. i i want to protect them and i and i love what we have yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you think m uh, most media personalities uh, have that skill that you have of just like keeping it under wraps? No I don't nothing, know if it's a skill. No signal. I, I feel like know. it's a but skill. But I feel like I right, feel right like now, though, yeah. it's really hard for people to be very discreet because the more you share, yeah. the more interesting you are. I don't uh, know if absolutely. you've noticed that. Mm -hmm. Like the more you're talking about something, the more you're sharing about who you've slept with, mm. you know, what you've done. That's people want to see that. Actually so you kind of like exactly. Fast. But if you're just there, no one wants to know what what's going on. Yeah. So the more you put out, okay. the more people want to know, and yeah. you get into that cycle of, I need to give more. I need yeah. to give more. Right. So and that's, that's something that I never wanted for me. Or right. my family. I don't, I really don't need to give more. Like, right. what you see is just what you what get. What you get. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And it should be like that. We have like four minutes with you before, before we play the game. Uh, okay. There's somebody here who's saying, ask her, uh, ask her if she has 
siblings, and then uh, what scares her now that she was on TV for so long? Yes, she was on TV for a very long time. What scares you? And uh, and before we, before we play the game. So I do not have any siblings. I'm the only child. Aye, uh, she's the only child. <laughs> <laughs> so come on, we want to take a sister, Paul. I'm a Kaputs. brother. <laughs> uh, but right. as far as what scares me the most, I would say what scares me the most is not realizing my purpose. Right. Because you always be constantly trying to figure out what to do. Right. Right. So, and that's something that I also want to, to, that's something I really pray for my child as well, that they don't right. have to battle finding their identity or finding their purpose, you yeah. know, that they, they're able to find it early enough so that they can really just focus on that. So Absolutely. that's my, that's my biggest fear, not finding my purpose. And it's hard, especially when you're older and you're just like, oh my God, oh what my am goodness. I doing? Yeah. Uh, um, as we go, um, maybe uh, what are some of the projects that we should expect from you? What is uh, your advice to any young and upcoming media personality that looks up to you? Of course, they know your name right. <laughs> out there. If they're looking up to you, uh, what should they what should they actually expect as well? And there may be lessons you've learned that you love to give them, any tools that you have for them. This is your camera. Before you tell us your social media and okay. when your radio show airs on Capital. Okay. okay. Right. So uh, I will be back on TV very soon. Actually, very, very soon. So stay tuned for that because I will be sharing with you the new project that we're working on. Additionally, I have something also preparing or cooking for you moms uh, because I really, like I said, I want to impact moms and children because I truly believe that when a mother is the best of their self, if that even makes sense. But yeah. when a mother is great, is doing well mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, they're able to really pour into their children. And yeah. that really just changes the dynamics of the communities that we live in. Right. So mothers, there is something coming for you and also children. So right. stay tuned for that. Uh, additionally, you could follow me on all social media pages. That is at Tracy Wanjura underscore. Um, just to keep up with a lot of things that maybe I may just one day just wake up and say aha i'm launching this right. but so far those are the two projects that i'm really really keen on right. um you know launching very soon so look forward for that and for every single um girl you know boy who's looking at me and wants to really you know join the media yes, fraternity mm -hmm. or start this journey believe in yourself like you've actually got everything in you to make it happen, to become as big as Larry, or even bigger than Larry, right? Absolutely. You have it in you. All you need to do is just believe in yourself, put in the work, trust the process, as much as the process can really suck, right. um, trust it, Absolutely. because it really is, all, all this really mm. contribute to the person that you will become. So you've Absolutely. got this, believe in yourself. Yeah. And, and thank you so much. Uh, I forgot You're to welcome. ask you, when did you become friends with Trey Songs? But we'll talk about that. <laughs> I think uh, that's the time I also met Trey Songs, but from a very far. But okay. anyways, uh, thank you so much, Tracy, Sorry for gracing us. I wish you had more time. Uh, I'm, I'm being rushed in my ear. They're like, we are cutting we you off cut, air. We need to cut. Okay, okay, we need to go. <laughs> yeah, so thank you so, thank much, you so much for coming for through. Me, and Brian. nice to meet you in person. We wish nice you the best of luck in everything you, so you do. Much. Thank you so much for watching. It's been All such right. a pleasure being here with Brian. All right, we see you next time right here on Why in the Morning.